Um, what's different about this model is that we actually have a non-planar primary surface. So the primary surface is this arch surface right here. So if I just go ahead and open up that model. Did you weight this? Is this is not this? yet? I'm going to. Oh, Gary. okay. It's so be part of the demonstration. Yeah. Oh, that, so we had a couple oh, questions about that. I, and that's why I apologize. I just let some of the wind out of the sail. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend I didn't say that. So this move has 15 primary locators, and those are all these, you know, direction 13 here, 9, 4, 6, 12, all the way around. But then we also have target 16 and 18 here is acting as a four-way. And then over here we have 17, which is acting as a two-way. So if I nominal build this, it's going to best fit all of those. And okay, something happens to my model here. I'll have to update my CGR. All right, so now if I nominal build and we watch it deviate, we might not be able to tell, but it's best fitting all those pairs equally. So while the direction 18 that we see here has no competition from the primary plane, direction 16 and 17, which is our secondary direction, is actually competing with our primary plane to get its location. So that those are also being best fit, but we're treating them as if they're four-way uh, maybe rivets going in holes. So if I run my analysis, I have a measure in the y direction at my four-way, my z direction at my four-way, and then my z direction at my two-way. And if I run analysis here, We're going to see that the y direction has no variation because, as I just said, there's nothing competing with it, our four-way in that y direction. But if I look at my z direction measures, we actually do have some variation there. And that's because it's also best fitting those, and those are competing with our primary plane. So we don't want that to happen because we're treating these as if they're rivets going to holes, maybe slots. Um, and these are hard stops. So in the X-plane movie, actually the power to weight each point point pair. So if you click this more button right here, it'll open up the user DLL more information dialog, and then you can enter how many constants you want. I have 18 object target pairs, so I'm gonna have 18 constants. If I go to constants 16, 17, and 18, those are going to correspond to my object and target 16, 17, and 18. And so those are the ones that I want to apply a heavy weight to. Now you can put any value here, you can put two, you can put three. Um, internally at 3DCS, we have so far only been really using this as a hard stop check, and we find that if you set this to 5,000, then the software recognizes that as a strong stop, and we'll end up with virtually no variation there, assuming we leave all the other ones at zero. So all my other constants right now are at zero. I've only changed direction or constant 16 to have a high weight. Yeah, this is something that's going to be modified yes, in the final, it is. final move. You know, because it's kind of a strange way to mm -hmm. put some constraints on it. <laughs> Agreed, Gary. Um, so I changed constants 16, 17, and 18, which are basically our weight factors, all to 5,000. This is going to treat 16, 17, and 18 pairs as hard stops. So now I'm going to pull up um, our results window that we just ran, so we can have that to compare it to. I'm going to run my results again. Now you can see that all of these have tightened right up to have a six sigma deviation of 0, 0.00, whereas before they had a six sigma value of 0 0.77. So they're considered much more strongly in the analysis. We've set those to be the heavyweights, and now it's really 
only taking into account those primary 15 points for its best fit calculation, and it's just setting all of these as hard stops.